Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka A Drop. I'm pretty guys our pregame press conference and team builder for week six of the WBE. The Minnesota Vikavolts are taking on the LA Spice and Coach K Cray, who's got an incredible team for us to break down. And this is gonna be a tough match, guys. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. We have done very well this season. We are four wins and one loss. Our only loss being to Wolf Glick the first week of the season. We've got a nice win streak going. K Cray is three and two. She's had some really interesting battles and some really close matches, and she's got a really 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 good team one that just particularly is good against our team so like i said we're gonna break it down if you enjoy these types of videos be sure to like the video down below subscribe if you guys are new get those notifications turned on and again the battle will be up tomorrow for wbe so show some love and get excited for that battle let's talk about k craze team and what she's bringing and what i think she's gonna end up ultimately using in this match she's got a gmax venusaur a gmax venusaur of course has gmax vine lash which does that same kind of effect that you know blastoise can do and obviously a sleep powder which is a huge threat and chlorophyll has this ability to double its speed under the sun condition dust clops the premier trick room setter in the format of course being able to go for trick room it can rock tomb uh one of uh k craze pokemon to activate a weakness policy it's very difficult to take down it's just super bulky and just an annoying pokemon in general nine tails the regular nine tails the battle of the nine tails here uh it's the fire type pokemon it's like a song of fire and ice in this one the fire type nine tails sets up drought basically to support the venusaur tyranitar can set up sandstream so a secondary weather option here for k cray and tyranitar is very scary man this thing is incredibly bulky if you're not hitting it with fighting type attacks it can take those hits very well and it can do a lot of damage especially if it gets a weakness policy itself a Raquinid, the Water Spider, very good Trick Room Pokemon, sits at base 42 speed, which just happens to be a little bit faster than my Rhyperior and my Turtonator, which means that on paper, our Trick Room mode seems to be a little bit more viable. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but a hits incredibly hard with Liquidations. It, it is so strong. The one thing that I think k Cray's team kind of kind of struggles with a little bit is the sense that a Raquinid oftentimes at least in my practice matches will end up with sun up so it kind of has to change the weather around a little bit there but still Comfey Comfey is a threat man it's a fairy type that can use trick room itself it can uh go for priority healing moves like absorb or giga drain into things like Tyranitar to activate weakness policies got to be careful there Fungus much like a Moongus can redirect I don't see Fungus doing much but it also has spore Salazzle, very scary. Fake out, heat wave, sludge bomb, sludge wave, etc. Can do a lot of damage with those moves. Cloister, shell smash is generally what it does, but it's got such a weak special defense, and I have such an offensive special team. I, I'm not really thinking Cloister is all that scary. Mawile, very scary in the sense that it has intimidate, can hit really hard, can use sheer force, deal a lot of extra damage. Uh, can be a good Dynamax candidate, despite the fact that it doesn't have the highest attack stat. You throw a Life Orb and Sheer Force on that thing, and it can actually do a lot of damage. And then the last thing is Purloin. Purloin can be a bit annoying. It would almost certainly come with Focus Sash, gets Fake Out, can control weather, just deal some shenanigans with that with some priority moves. I think with me having Serena, it's a tough sell. In terms of what I think K is actually going to bring, though, Venusaur Ninetales are 1 million percent coming. We don't even have to predict that. I think Tyranitar Dusclops come. I think Araquanid comes. And then from there, maybe Comfey or Salazzle. I really don't see Fungus coming. I really don't see Cloyster coming. I think Mawile is a tough bring, but could be brought. And I don't see Purloin coming. So it does kind of eliminate things a little bit. I would say one of the scariest things that uh, could come to this match would probably be Salazzle, I would say. That thing is just a massive problem. But let's break down our team, what we're bringing, why we're bringing it, and how everything's going to shake down in this match. The first thing I'm going to be bringing this week is going to be Liberty. Liberty, our Bronzong here, is rocking heat proof to take those... Uh, uh, fire type moves a little bit better. I've got the Culver Berry there, which is good for Tyranitar. Now, there is a unique situation where KK could bring unnerved Tyranitar, which stops our berries from activating, and I can get knocked out by a Max Darkness, but I don't anticipate unnerved Tyranitar, especially against my Hail team. Now, obviously, I have a Hail team. K has a Sun team, which is very good against Hail and Sand. Uh, so, me running Hail is very difficult here, and that makes this matchup very challenging for me. Um, but either way, this is a standard Trick Room set. I've got Rock Tomb there to activate a Weakness Policy. Uh, Psychic, Trick Room, and Body Press. Body Press for Tyranitar. Psychic there for Venusaur, and then, of course, the uh, the important Trick Room. The One of the keys to our strategy here is Shell Shock, our Blastoise. This is a Max HP, Max Special Attack Blastoise, Rocking Shell Smash, Water Spout, Dark Pulse, Blizzard. Now, there's a few damage rolls that are really important that we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, but if I can essentially get that Shell Smash up, I can get off those big, big cannonades and do a lot of chip damage to the team. Blastoise is such an important member of this team this week, and if I can successfully get up those shell smashes and start dealing damage, this thing can do a lot, even with Sun being a problem, right? Like, even with her having Sun, I can still use Blastoise effectively because it can deal so much damage in this battle. 
Under the Trick Room condition, I think Turtonator can be really strong here. It's got the Shell Armor, Weakness Policy, Heat Wave, Scorching Sands, and Draco Meteor. Uh, Turtonator is really good here. When you look at its typing, it's very good against Ninetales, very good against Venusaur, minus Earth Power, which really just activates our, our weakness policy. It's okay against Araquanid. It's good against Salazzle. It's good against Comfey. It's good against Fungus. It's good against Mawile. It's, uh, you know, it, it's just overall like a really good Pokemon minus a few little things here and there. I think that Turtonator, the Turtle Squad, is going to be very, very much so key to victory. Obviously, Dynamax in this thing with the weakness policy allows us to double our special attack, which can just deal tremendous amounts of damage. Uh, Her Sun actually helps Turtonator out, which is good. And Scorching Sands, those special defense boosts can be really clutch, especially against a pretty specially heavy team with Venusaur Ninetales. This is going to be one of the main counters to that. Togekiss, Disco, come about. This is the Serene Grace Togekiss, which is going to double our chance to flinch with Air Slash. There is actually a scenario where I lead Togekiss Blastoise, and if she leads the Trick Room strategy, which is her Dusclops, I actually Air Slash Dark Pulse the Dusclops and go for the flinch. That's a 60% and 20% chance to flinch. That is actually a strategy that we have in this match. Otherwise, this is generally just to redirect, follow me. Helping Hand, very clutch, as I mentioned earlier. There's a few damage calcs where Helping Hand actually really matters. One of them being plus two max hailstorm from blastoise just barely misses the ko on venusaur if it takes a life orb hit i think we get the ko after hail but that helping hand guarantees that ko there um otherwise protect i love protect on togekiss because i feel like it's often just people know it's going to follow me so people just attack it so having protect especially in a best two out of three can be really valuable and then again flinching things with air slash not a bad thing i opted to just leave uh, Dazzle the Gleam off. I have the Charty Berry there, which is for that Tyranitar. Again, Unnerved Tyranitar could really mess me up, but Unnerved Tyranitar also doesn't have the special defense boost of Sand, and I really think that K is going to want that special defense boost, because uh, and the Sand to just disrupt any potential hail. So, that makes things a little challenging there, but I think that this is definitely a really good Togekiss. We're super duper bulky. We can actually live the, the Max Rock Falls. We can actually live a, a Life Orb Modest Sludge Bomb from Venusaur, and then take a second hit from the uh, Ninetales, so some pretty cool stuff there. We've got Terra here, bring in the uh, Rhyperior. This is a very specially bulky Rhyperior with the Rindo Berry. Rindo Berry reduces the power of grass type moves and allows me to take on that Venusaur, potential uh, Salazzle, Ninetales with Solar Beam, any of those grass type moves, Comfey, things like that. And if I can boost my special defense with Max Quakes, that's really solid. Uh, you'll see I have two rock moves here, Rock Slide and Rock Wrecker. Rock Wrecker is a 150 base power rock type move that makes you recharge. Think like Hyper Beam or Giga Impact. But when, a, when it's a max move, it's much stronger than Rock Slide, and it actually is enough base power difference to secure a KO on, a, on an Araquanid. So, uh, when Dynamax, right? So, that is why I have Rock Wrecker, because if she runs like a, a, a max HP Araquanid, which is what you'd expect, uh, Rock Wrecker picks up the KO, whereas Rock Slide doesn't when they're max Rock Fall. Otherwise, it's just really good if I'm not Dynamax, Rock Wrecker just does way more damage. It's kind of like a huge, just one whack hit. So we've got that for us. And then obviously Max Quake, Protect, pretty standard stuff there. And then last but not least is Emma Frost, our Ninetales. This is a unique Emma Frost and, and a very unique strategy this week because I can't utilize Hail as I normally would. This is mainly to switch in on Venusaur when Sun is already up. So I can change the weather back to Hail, outspeed the Venusaur, and potentially knock it out with a Blizzard. We have hail on here for manual hail if I really desperately need it. I've got freeze dry on there as well for Araquanid. Does about half uh, to Araquanid, which is pretty decent, and it's just a reliable uh, like attack, so I'm not just sitting there trying to click blizzards out of hail. Um, and I do have focus sash on there. The, the thing to mention about this Ninetales, though, it's more on team preview as a distraction than anything, but it is specifically speed EV'd to outspeed max speed Venusaur outside of Sun and under speed nine tails in general so in a scenario where nine tails and nine tails lead my nine tails is slowest which means that the hail would be set up right so uh, as opposed to the sun the sun would go up first and then my hail normally nine tails outspeeds like alola nine tails outspeeds regular nine tails it's reversed in this one in terms of other pokemon that i decided not to bring my initial draft did have sand slash on it i think sand slash is really good but it needs hail to be good otherwise it just gets destroyed i can't rely on hail in this week it's just with her having two weathers it's just too risky for me uh, Hitmonchan, I actually think, had an okay matchup, but Dusclops just, just sits there in front of it, and it just makes things really difficult, even though it's good against the Tyranitar. Serena, I was thinking, because Queenly Majesty stops Fake Out, Sweet Veil could stop the potential sleep. My approach to this match is if she starts sleep powdering and she hits them, then she hits them. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I mean, I could have ran safety goggles or things like that, but if I do that, I'm, I'm weaker to so many other things. So I'm just going to take my chances on sleep. If she starts sweet scent hypnosis or sleep powders everywhere, then so be it. I'm just going to get wrecked in that. Uh, Drapion, 
Decent matchup. I think she's going to have to carry coverage for it with things like Earth Power and stuff. But I don't really see it being all that useful this week. And of course, Voltergeist, too. I don't even see in the box right now. I don't know where he went. Uh, Voltergeist, very, very good. But, uh, oh, you know, he might be in the daycare. Um, very, very good. But again, another ice type. Just so many stacky weaknesses. This team is so good when the opponent doesn't have good answers to ice types. But in a situation where they have two really good fire types, a Venusaur that can run Weather Ball. I mean, this is the perfect storm of like her having a, just a super good matchup against me. Uh, my strategy going into the match, Togekiss Blastoise, Togekiss Bronzong. Those are my two main leads. I'm not sure which I go with first. I like the Togekiss Blastoise. I think it's a really good lead if I can get a Shell Smash off. Not as good against a Trick Mood mode. If she brings Room Service Araquanid, I'm probably in trouble. I can deal with the Araquanid with uh, things like Rhyperior, but we'll have to see what she ends up bringing on preview. Uh, this is a tough match, definitely a winnable one, but we'll do our best and hopefully pick up a W for week six. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like the video down below. Subscribe if you guys are new, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you enjoyed this video for me, I'm sure you're gonna love this video right here. However, YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this video. So check out one of my two videos, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.